Hi, greetings everyone. In this video, we will see how to define the working and the non-working time for calendar. Once you have set up the calendars for your project in any special work schedules, it's time to get into the specifics of the identifying the working and the non-working days and times. You also have to set a few project calendars options so project knows how to convert the duration to hours of the work. On the project tab, click on change working time. In this case, the calendar we want to work on is already here. That is the training calendar. And it's the project calendar. Now one thing to look at before we get started is this calendar. You can see that the working days are white cells and the non-working days are gray cells. You can also see the cell you select and working time appears on the right side of the dialog box. Well, the first thing to do is to go to the work weeks tab. Work weeks are basically the schedules that people follow week after week. Now you can see here there is a default work week. The start and the finish is set to NA. That means it applies to all the dates. When I click details, the details for the default shows up so I know which work week I'm working on. In this case, we are going to set Friday to a non-working day. So click on the details. So we have to set the Friday as a non-working day. So you can click on here on the radio button and set this as a non-working day. But to make up for that, we are going to actually make Monday through Thursday a little bit longer. So I can drag over Monday through Thursday the way I've done it and in this case choose the third option set days to these specific working time. Now when I do that you can see that the times are editable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen the day I am going to have it finish at 6 p.m. So I'll make this to 6 And I can type here 6 and if I go to the another cell project fills in 6 p.m. the way it is done because that's later than the 1 p.m. in from the box. If for some reason you wanted to delete a row just drag over the row and then press the delete. So you need to select the row and just press the delete key on your keyboard. But in this case the working times are fine so I just click OK. This work week is set to 8 to 6 Monday through Thursday with an hour for lunch. So that's 36 hours and that means there is one thing that we are going to have to do and that's to set some calendar options. So click on OK to close the change working time dialog box. So simply click on OK. Then go to the file tab and click on options. So we go to the schedule category. So here we have a schedule category. And the thing that we have to do is we have to match the hours per day, the hours per week, the days per month. That way the project knows how to convert the duration to work hours. Well, in this case, the hours per day is set to 8 and right now we have got the work days that go from 8 to 6. So here we'll make some changes. The hours per day will be 9. The hours per week will be changed to 36 since we have 4 days in a week. And the days per month, so this will be the average of the days. The days per month is an estimate of the number of working days in each month. So in this case, we are working 
Monday through Thursday. So we will change that to 16. The default start time box is for the tasks that don't have predecessors. So basically that's fine because it's set to the beginning of our standard workday of 8 to 6 but default end time isn't. So we have changed that to 6 pm. Now that the options are set, close the project option dialog box by just simply clicking on OK button here. Now you can actually set up the additional work weeks. So for example, if you have an alternate schedule, maybe different week in the summer. So to do that, go back to the change working time dialog box and in this case, go to the work weeks tab and click a blank cell. We can type here summer of 2014. In this case, the work week only applies for a specific date range. So you, here we have to put the start date as say, we'll start with June of 2014 and we'll finish at the end of the August. Basically, you set up the working and the non-working times for that work week just as we did before for the default so you would click details and make whatever settings you want. Now there is one other thing you can do with the calendars and that's to create the exceptions. Exceptions are usually non-working times so things like for a project it might be holidays if it's a resource calendar, it could be somebody's vacation, but you can actually have a special work times in the exception as well. In this case, we are going to create a holiday for the 4th July. So here we'll simply type in the exceptions. July. Go in and create the start and finish dates. Say I want to select ninth July to say tenth July. So in this case, I am going to select from ninth July to tenth July. Then the finish is Friday. When I click details, you can see the project automatically selects the non-working options. So in this case, it's perfectly fine. However, you can actually create exceptions for working times as well. One of the things you have to keep in mind about exceptions, especially if they are longer exceptions, is that every day has to be the same. It either has to be non-working time or it has to be the same working times. So you could do that for the factory maintenance where no one works for two weeks while the factory is closed. In this case, the non-working is fine. So I click on OK. We have an exception. There is another type of exception and that's one that reoccurs. So let's say that there is a quarterly meeting. I am going to name that and I'll give it a start date. So here we'll create it for the quarterly meeting.
will choose 6th January and in this case when I click the details we go to the reoccurrence pattern sections in this case we are going to make it a monthly meeting and you can actually choose a specific day of the month or you can say something like the first day in this case when I click details we go to the recurrence pattern section in this case we are going to make it a monthly meeting and you can actually choose a specific day of the month or you can say something like the first Friday. So here I'll say the first Friday. It's a quarterly meeting. So on this case, it's going to be every three months. So I'll change this to every three months. Now the start date is already filled in. But you can specify how many occurrences or you can do an end date. So for example, in this case, I'm going to put in 12 occurrences and then click on OK. So here it has changed to finish date as 2017. It automatically calculates the finishing date here. One of the other things to notice is that non-standard working times actually show up in this calendar with the kind of light shaded background and an underline so that how you can tell the days that are set to the non-standard times but our calendar work is done so just click OK to close the change working time dialog box. When you set up the working and the non-working days and times for your project and resources, project can calculate a more accurate and realistic schedules. I hope the concept is clear to you. Thank you.